So, uh, good morning all of you. Today we will start a new topic, a new chapter which is chemical vapor deposition. Before uh, starting discussion on this particular chapter, let us briefly narrate what we have so far discussed on the epitaxial deposition. In the last class, you have already seen that epitaxial films are single crystal film, single crystal silicon or 3,5 compounds, how they are formed or they are deposited on single crystal wafer and those films should be a very good quality so that they can be used in VLSI fabrications. We confined our discussion in epitaxial chapter the growth of single crystal layer. But in microelectronics application or VLSI applications, sometimes we need films which may not be of single crystal in nature. They may be in polycrystal or they may be in amorphous in nature. Sometimes we need deposition of films which are also dielectric or metals. Now, those dielectrics or metals or amorphous polycrystal semiconducting films are deposited by various techniques and one of the popular technique is chemical vapor deposition and we will discuss now how the CBD technique is used to get good quality films and those films may be semiconducting films and those semiconducting films may not be of crystal quality they may be polycrystal in quality, they may be amorphous in nature and also we will discuss the deposition of films which are dielectric in nature, particularly deposition of silicon dioxide and silicon nitride. Silicon dioxide, silicon nitride and polysilicon, these three materials are widely used in nowadays VLSI processes. And CVD technique is highly used in industrial environment also in industrial process because this particular technique provides back fabrication and in that case your cost will be low, you can get higher throughput. So that is the advantage and now let us confine our discussion on chemical vapor deposition. Chemical vapor deposition is defined as the formation of a non-volatile solid film on a substrate by the reaction of vapor phase chemicals which are called reactants that contain the liquid, the required constituents, sorry, the required constituents. So here the vapor phase chemicals, the vapor phase chemicals that means it may be gaseous phase or sometimes we use liquid phase chemical, liquid chemicals which are vaporized and they are sent or they are flown into the reaction chamber with certain partial pressure for reaction taking place and to grow the film. Now application of CVD or chemical vapor deposition are as follows. CVD is an extremely popular and is a preferred deposition method for a wide range of materials. The major applications of CVD process are single crystal epitaxial growth, polysilicon film deposition, dielectric film deposition particularly silicon dioxide, silicon nitride we are interested and metal film deposition particularly tungsten or tantalum, tantalum metals are used in CVD. Nowadays, uh, aluminum and copper CVD are also reported. So, out of these four applications, single crystal epitaxial growth we have studied in details in the last chapter. Here, also we will mention some of the CVD techniques, particularly UHV CVD which is known as ultra high vacuum chemical vapor deposition technique and metallo or organic CBD 
or MO CVD, those CVD techniques produce single crystal epitaxial film and they are very much popular in heteroepitaxial process for the growth of silicon germanium or for the growth of 3, 5 or 2, 6 semiconductor materials, UHB CBD and MO CBD are highly popular. Other than those two techniques, the polysilicon film deposition CBD techniques is very much popular and oxide and nitride formation. Now, CBD reaction mechanisms we discuss. CBD reaction follows the following steps. What are the steps? Let us see one by one. The first transport of reacting gaseous species to the substrate surface. Transportation of reactant gases. And this transportation must be well controlled. That means the gases are are inserted or the gases are flown into the reaction chamber through mass flow controller so that very accurately you can control the partial pressure inside the reaction chamber. Partial pressure of individual ga reactant gases inside the reaction chamber. What are the reactant gases? One is the source gas and another is the carrier gas because the raw source gas we are not using, carrier gas and the third one is the dopant gas. Source gas in the in this CBD react, reactors where we want to make silicon dioxide or silicon nitride films, we use silane SiH4 because we know silane decomposition reaction is at a low temperature, nearly 900 degrees centigrade. And if we want to grow the polycrystal film, we are not bothered about the crystalline quality. Sometimes even lower temperature processes are available for CVD of oxide or nitride deposition. And those, there is a dilution, diluent gas used, that is the, the hydrogen particularly, that is carrier gas in case of silent, uh, silent uh, reactions or for growth of polysilicon or nitride and oxide dielectrics, we use hydrogen as a carrier gas and in case of forming silicon dioxide, another gas will be oxygen obviously. So that oxygen and silane may be then source gas and um, carrier gas will be the hydrogen and in case of silicon nitride, we use ammonia. NH3 or nitrous oxide as another source gas for getting along with silane for growing the silicon nitride film. So next once the uh, reactant gases are, are flown into the chamber, next step is the absorption or chemisorption of the species on the substrate surface. The gaseous species are absorbed or chemically absorbed which is known as chemisorption on the substrate surface. Next, the heterogeneous reaction catalyzed by the substrate surface. Now the reaction will take place that is decomposition of silane or hydrogen reduction re reaction. Similar reaction also we have seen in silicon epitaxial growth. So this heterojection, heterogeneous reaction catalyzed by the substrate surface is the third step. The fourth step is desorption of gaseous reaction products because at the reaction there are some byproducts and those byproducts are dissolved that is evolved after reaction and those gaseous byproduct are ejected in the reaction and that has to be thrown out from the reaction chamber. So obviously the next step will be transport of reaction products away from the substrate surface. 
the reaction byproduct gases has to be transported away from the substrate surface and before uh, releasing those reaction byproducts into the atmosphere they have to be neutralized using some scrubber arrangement they are dissolved in water and they are neutralized so that they are not hazardous and they are not dangerous for uh, dangerous for human beings and then they are disposed they are thrown okay so these are the reaction mechanisms now let us see what are the press process variables in a chemical vapor deposition reaction the process variables basically control the reaction and obviously if it controls the reaction it controls the growth rate also the process variables are temperature partial pressure of gases and total pressure of the reactant species inside the reaction chamber these are three process variables who can control the growth rate and also the quality of the deposited fill okay now the gas phase chemical reactions takes place between 100 to 1000 degree centigrade at a pressure of 0.05 to 760 torr driven thermally or by plasma this chemical reaction takes place by heating that means the the reaction may be driven by high temperature means thermal driven and cvd reaction may also take place not by thermally driven but by using plasma plasma may be another energy source which can be used for cvd reaction and which can be used for deposition of various films then that is known as plasma enhanced cvd or pe cvd and thermally driven cvds are known as ap cvd or atmospheric pressure cvd and atmospheric pressure cvd the reaction the pressure of the reaction chamber is maintained at 760 torr in this atmospheric pressure cvd now if we reduce the pressure at a low value of of the order of 0 0.05 to 1 torr then that process is known as low pressure cvd that is lp cvd that means here thermally driven there are two cvd one is known as atmospheric pressure cvd which is ap cvd other is low pressure cvd which is known as lp cvd both the lp cvd is also very much popular in blsi process and we will discuss lp cvd in detail and p cvd also plasma enhanced cvd plasma enhanced cvd the plasma is the driving energy but lp cvd and ap cvd thermal energy is the driving driving force or driving energy now there are two types of reactors one is known as hot wall reactor another is cold wall reactor all of you know the in hot wall reactor chambers and samples are heated hot wall and cold wall reactor configuration already have discussed in epitaxial classes also now again i will just compare the hot wall and cold wall reactor its advantage and disadvantages in cvd also hot wall and cold wall both are used and in hot wall reactors you know these are chamber and samples both are heated and the uh, there is a uh, homogeneous temperature maintained inside the reaction reactant chamber but in cold wall reactor the temperature is not homogeneous inside the reactor chamber that is a in is a cold wall reactor in cold wall reactor only susceptor and samples are heated but walls of the reactors are not heated they are at a lower temperature than the susceptor and sample susceptor and samples are locally locally heated but the temperature is not homogeneous inside the chamber 
as a result of which you may not expect very uh, uniform layer of the film. But there are certain problems in hot wall reactors and those problems are contamination as we mentioned because what happens since the reactor walls are also hot there are deposition of the film on the reactor walls because the reactant gases when they enter into the chamber then the, the reaction will take place on the susceptor and substrate as well as on the wall of the reactor because all of the reactor is also at high temperature. If it is a quartz chamber then on the wall of the quartz chamber the reaction also will take place and the film will be deposited. If I want to grow polysilicon or say silicon dioxide and nitride they will also deposit there. Then what will happen in when the process continues some of those deposited films flex up and they may be deposited on the substrate surface as a particulate as a particle from the walls some granules or some particles flex off which are deposited there they are peeling off and they will be again redeposit on the substrate and the their substrate those peeling off portion will act as a particulate contamination and the defects will appear in the film so that is one of the major problem of the hot wall reaction chambers okay uh, in case of cold wall reactors there will be no deposition on the wall less deposition and obviously less contamination from the chamber okay so these are the advantage and disadvantage of hot wall and cold wall reactors now we we'll discuss a simple thermal cvd reactor which is used for silicon deposition this is a simple schematic configuration of a thermal CVD reactor. So, it is a rectangular configuration the reaction chamber and here is the gas inlet through which you can flow the gases source gas as well as carrier gas as well as dopant gas and here is a susceptor and on the susceptor you can keep the wafer the, this is a horizontal flow is maintained because the flow of the reactant species horizontal to the wafer surface and there is an exhaust system through which the reaction byproduct gases are also taken out from the chamber and utilized and disposed. So, the in this particular configuration the susceptor is locally heated means the chamber is not heated that means it is a cold wall reactor configuration the gases which is entering they will come in contact with the wafer surface reaction will take place and as I discussed in the earlier slides in the in a subsequent five steps will follow and the film will be deposited and byproducts will be ejected. Now here decomposition of silane gas to form polysilicon at susceptor temperature the reaction is like this SiH4 in the gaseous form it will decompose at high temperature to SiH2 which is also gaseous and it will evolve hydrogen molecules at higher temperature. In the subsequent reaction SiH2 will again dissociate into silicon and hydrogen and that silicon is polycrystal in nature and polysilicon. And the reaction here should be heterogeneous where deposition reactions occur at the surface of the surface of the wafer. Reaction is not homogeneous, is a heterogeneous. Okay. So, in this way, in this simple reactor configuration, you can get polysilicon films. And one thing you can see here, we are not really bothered about the susceptor configuration that means earlier case in single crystal epitaxial growth we have seen some slant susceptor is maintained in order to reduce the boundary layer thickness because there we need perfectly uniform single crystal layer growth over the entire silicon wafer 
which may be of 6 inch or 8 inch diameter. But here, since we are not bothered about the, the uh, crystalline quality, we are here we are going to deposit the polysilicon film and even the polysilicon film uh, thickness is not exactly uniform. That means some boundary layer effect will be there, it does not uh, matter. So, we can use just perfectly horizontal reactor configuration in this case, in this CVD system. Now, the reactions we will discuss surface reactions. Probability of an incident silent molecule will stick to surface of the substrate is given by this equation gamma SIH4 0.054 e to the power minus 0.81 by kT where k is the Boltzmann constant and T is temperature in absolute scale. This is the sticking coefficient. The sticking coefficient of silane on silicon is roughly equal to 10 to the power minus 6. That is a, T is the deposition temperature, reaction temperature, which is typical in the range of so 6 to 800 to 900 degree centigrade. So, the value is like this. Once the molecule is on the surface, it is first adsorbed. And during absorption, the SiH2 gaseous will remain as SiH2, which is adsorbed. The A stands for adsorbed, adsorbed species. Okay. SiH4 in earlier reaction I have shown, the SiH4 will decompose to SiH2 and hydrogen. Now, this SiH2 in gaseous phase will form SiH2 adsorbed species and then SiH2 adsorbed will again decompose into silicon which is solid particle and hydrogen which is gaseous. Okay. Then SiH4 first changes to SiH2 gaseous, SiH2 gaseous changes to SiH2 adsorbed and SiH2 adsorbed net then decomposes to silicon and hydrogen and this silicon is solid and this is polycrystal in nature. Okay. Now, we will now just compare the APCVD versus LPCVD. In both cases, the thermal and both are thermally driven AP and LPCVD one is at atmospheric pressure and another is low pressure. So, in both the cases, what are the distinctions, advantage, disadvantages, let us see. Here in atmospheric pressure CVD, chemical equilibrium of all species is possible. In APCVD, chemical equilibrium of all species is possible. In low pressure CVD, if the pressure is of the order of 300 millibar, the mean free path lambda of molecule equals to chamber dimension because pressure is very low, so there will be less collision in the gas phase. Mean free path equals to chamber dimension, so there is a little chance of collision and hence there will not be chemical equilibrium. The chemical equilibrium is obtained by collisions, lot of collisions will be there, this will be mixtured homogeneously and you will get chemical equilibrium. But, but if pressure is low, mean free path of the molecules is almost the chamber dimension, then less chances of collision and no chemical equilibrium takes place. So, obviously, if there is no chemical equilibrium of the gas mixtures, so then the chamber design must be critical chamber design is critical, we are wrongly written crystal, it will be critical. 
so chamber design will be critical processes that do not reach chemical equilibrium are called kinetically controlled process here we saw the lpcvd the chemical equilibrium is not achieved so in that case the processes are kinetically controlled process lpcvd hence apcvd is a chemical equilibrium while lpcvd is kinetically controlled based lpcvd reaction is kinetically controlled reaction okay so these are both are cvd and both will have the thermally driven reaction but one is atmospheric pressure other is low pressure in atmospheric pressure the reaction is chemical equilibrium reaction and other case kinetically controlled reaction this is the distinction between apcvd and lpcvd now uh, let us discuss on cvd classifications here the cvd are classified the branchings are shown here this is atmospheric pressure cvd another is low pressure cvd atmospheric pressure cvd apcvd there are two reactor configurations one is hot wall tube and other is cold wall so this is a hot wall tube reaction this is a cold wall reaction and then one is a continuous motion and epitaxial growth in case of continuous motion you will get polycrystal film and in case of epitaxial growth you will get single crystal film and again epitaxial growth there are two configuration of reactors one is known as a barrel other is known as a pancake similarly continuous motion one is a plenum other is nozzle plenum type and nozzle type reactors are there in continuous motion cold wall apcvd reactors in other branch lpcvd it can be classified in three group one is hot wall tube one is plasma enhanced plasma cvd are not atmospheric pressure cvd that is also at low pressure cvd plasma enhanced or it's known as a p cvd and the next one is vertical flow isothermal cvd vertical flow isothermal cvd plasma enhanced cvd are again classified into three groups one is hot wall tube and there is cold wall tube hot wall tube cold wall tube cold wall planar single wafer cold wall planar batch there are two cold wall one is single wafer and other is a batch both configuration i will show you the diagrams are there so these are the classification vertical flow isothermals are the recent additions and low pressure apcvd which are now of greater interest in industrial environment okay now let us discuss on low pressure chemical vapor deposition lpcvd into a little bit detail the reactors are shown here lpcvd reactors one is simple single wafer other configuration is batch fabricated wafer batch fabrication possible so here in the first diagram gas inlet and you can see the sewer head sewer head means here the gases are are inserted or gases are flown into the chamber in a specific configuration of the configuration of the input uh, inlet that is in form of shower so the shower means the there are channels 
in one channel the source gas will flow then channel comes the carrier gas then comes either other gases either maybe oxygen maybe nitrogen containing ammonia gas or some in case of dope polysilicon you can use some dopant gas also so those gases are flown into the chamber flows into the chamber through a particular input tube which form swart showering of the gases and they are pre mixtured and they will they will come into the chamber in close to the substrates and these are susceptible to susceptors here and susceptors are heated that means it is a cold wall, cold wall configuration and this is a cross sectional diagram that means here it is a some circular type of the susceptor okay so you can keep the wafers on this circular type of susceptor and the ejected gas are gases are pumped out in the second diagram you can see the wafers are stacked just like oxidation furnace in oxidation furnace the wafers are kept similar similarly all are parallel and you have stacked the wafers so that you can uh, put large number of wafers you can stack large number of wafers into the carrier and the gas flow is again horizontal to the tube that means inside the tube a, a turbulence will be created of the gas mixtures and this is a again the hot wall reactors that is a resistive heating are used here heating elements are shown and the reaction by products are pumped out through an exhaust and it is disposed afterwards these are the wafers these hot wall horizontal reactors are of greater use in industrial environment because here in a particular batch you can deposit the film on a large number of wafers since it is an lpcbd system to achieve a reasonable deposition uniformity the process is designed to keep the reaction strictly controlled by deposition kinetics you have to design the reactor in such a fashion that the reaction strictly controlled by deposition kinetics here instead of diluent gas the use of low pressure that is 0.1 to 1 torr reduces gas phase nucleation because in reactors epitaxial reactors in as well as in cbd reactors we have seen the source gas is diluted before reaction takes place so if you use a raw gas of silane or silicon tetrachloride or whatever it is then there is a chance of nucleation that's why it is diluted but another alternative to prevent dilution is low pressure cbd system or low pressure epitaxial system if the pressure inside the chamber is made low of the order of 0.1 to 1 torr so in that case the nucleations will be reduced and those nucleations we have seen they will uh, put particulate contamination nucleate in the inside the film and they will put contamination or particulate formation which are another defects in epitaxial growth as well as in polycrystal silicon growth okay so now uh, this is a not uh, this is a low pressure not flow this is also one mistake the use of low pressures reduces gas phase nucleation not flow pressure now the lpcvd of polysilicon films the reaction is sih4 gaseous silicon and 2h2 compatibility with subsequent high temperature processing these are the 
characteristics of LPCVD polysilicon films. You can achieve excellent interface with thermal oxide. Thermal oxide silicon, you can grow polysilicon film on silicon dioxide. Sometimes we require those films. Excellent interface with thermal oxides. Another characteristic of LPCVD polysilicon film is its ability to be deposited conformally over steep topology. This is a one very important characteristic. Its ability to be deposited conformally over steep topography because if the surface to topography is not plain, it is not uniform, there are lot of ups and downs, later maybe uh, steep topography means there are certain region which is uh, depressed and certain region is elevated and a depression and elevated are, are, are very large. In that case, you will have steep topography that means crest and valleys are there over the surface and on those surface, if you want to have the homogeneous or conformal deposition, that means the deposited film will, will be of conformal nature, will be of uniform surface. So, that is achieved in case of CVD, LPCVD, CVD, LPCVD of polysilicon. That means you can have good step coverage. If there are a lot of steps, you can cover the steps, which is not possible by deposition of evaporation of the film. But LPCVD means the gas phase reaction, the gas mixtures, they will come in contact with the uh, on the surface and the surface may be elevated and may be some depressed uh, group form and inside the group the gas molecules, reactant molecules will go there and there the reaction will take place and it will deposit on the wall of the, this particular steeper group. So, in this way there is a chances of conformal deposition which is not possible in vacuum evaporation. So, that is one of the good characteristics here. Another is its compatibility of reacting with overlaying metal to form silicide structure. That is another application of LPCVD polysilicon film that is for silicide formation. Silicide I will discuss in detail in metallization class. So, in metallization lecture I will discuss in detail the formation of silicides. So, there we require polysilicon growth and polysilicon and metals are reacted to form a complex compound which is known as silicide. Examples are titanium silicide, tantalum silicide, cobalt silicide, tungsten silicide, molybdenum silicide, etc. They are used in CMOS technology for silicide gate and sometimes those are used for contact also. Silicides are also used for silo junction formation. There are a lot of applications of silicides. So, those are there we will discuss. It, this polysilicon, uh, the LPCVD polysilicon films are used for silicides also. So, now the silicide structures, just now I mentioned tungsten, tantalum or titanium silicides which reduced resistivity of the film. Polysilicon itself has high resistivity, but with metal film if silicides are formed, it resistivity will be lower. Another application of the LPCVD polysilicon films are in self-aligned processing of CMOS. Self-aligned technology, self-aligned process. In detail, I will discuss in lectures on the advanced processes, VLSI process or self-aligned process, self-aligned CMOS process I will discuss in detail. And these are, these are also used in TFT, thin film transistors, in stacked MOS capacitors, in ULSI, DRAM, sensor, etc. These are the application areas of LPCVD polysilicon films. Now, the LPCVD poly polysilicon films, the reaction temperatures are 575 to 650 degree centigrade. Pressure maintained is 0.2 to 1 torr.
0.2 to 1 third deposition rate around 10 nanometer per minute okay doping of polysilicon is possible by implantation diffusion or in situ doping this is important in application areas of shallow junction formation or sometimes we use this dope polysilicon for making emitter in bipolar process which is known as poly emitter transistor polysilicon emitter transistor polycrystal silicon as it is it will have high resistivities but if you dope with dopants I mean dope polysilicon will show resistivity less that means it may be used as a conducting film in case of uh, the uh, multi-layer metallization environments in some cases some contacts and interconnect lines you can make using dope polysilicon depending on the doping level you can adjust the conductivity and once you dope the polysilicon then if you sintered it then from the sinter at sintering temperature the dopants will introduce into silicon and it may, it may form a junction that is used in poly emitter transistors polysilicon emitter transistor you deposit dope polysilicon by and then you heat it or sinter it anneal it then from the polysilicon dopants will will introduce into the silicon over a thin layer very shallow junction you can get and in this way you can form poly emitter transistors and a diffusion in the dope polysilicon will also there that is through the grain boundaries dopant atoms will distribute current day dual gate CMOS technologies P plus poly for P channel MOSFETs and N plus poly for N channel MOSFETs polysilicons are highly used dual gate CMOS N channel MOS P channel MOS in both cases polysilicon are used for gate materials ok now in polysilicon uh, sorry in CBD technique we can deposit dielectrics also what are the reactions for dielectric deposition one oxide deposition reactions is shown here reaction temperature is 500 degree centigrade silane and oxygen are used here and their SiH4 in gaseous phase and oxygen in gaseous phase they together react and silicon dioxide is formed which is solid in nature and hydrogen gas is evolved reaction temperature is 500 degree centigrade and you can get silicon dioxide here you can see since reaction temperature is only 500 degree centigrade you may use this particular technique to deposit silicon dioxide on metal film some of the metal films for example tantalum or tungsten their softening temperature is higher than 500 degree centigrade so in those cases you may deposit the oxide film on metals and another reaction is decomposing vaporized tetraethyl orthosilicate film TEOS at 650 to 750 degree centigrade TEOS oxide and this is SiO2H5O4 that is liquid form TEOS is liquid so you have to use a bubbler through the liquid some carrier gas is flown and there that uh, is sent into the reactor and their reaction will take place and that is SiO2 will form which is solid in nature and some of the reaction byproducts gases will be there 
but here one thing we have to take caution that is since carbon is there there is chance of carbon contamination in TUS oxide ok and so these are uh, the uh, dialectic deposition methods in oxide similarly silicon nitride also you can get using the CBD technique and there you have to use silane and nitrous oxide NO2 or you can use silane along with ammonia NH3 gas and you can have SI3N4 and nitride deposition we will discuss nitride and oxide deposition also both the cases uh, both uh, the films are also deposited using the PCBD technique or plasma enhanced CBD and those we will discuss in detail in the next class ok let me stop here.